Welcome back in to AWA Unleashed. We are the self-proclaimed preeminent number one podcast dedicated to the stories and the memories of the American Wrestling Association. We're not trying to revive the promotion, you guys. We are here to tell the stories. And you can't tell stories without having uh, some of the best storytellers that the promotion has ever had. And let's bring in a couple of them right now, Mick Karch and Polish Joe. Yes, it, last week with John Nord, was it was just fucking fantastic. Like, I loved it. It was, I mean, I couldn't tell you how much I was sitting back here just like giggling. Because we kind of had an idea of some of the stories. Like, I'm hearing some of this stuff for the first time. And with you guys just reliving it, it's like... It's all coming back, and I'm hearing this stuff for the first time, and hopefully everybody out there is enjoying it the way that I'm enjoying it. But, oh, my God, guys, like, it's – this has been beyond my expectations was last week. Well, through, through the magic uh, tape or whatever we want to call it, no, we're not wearing the same clothes for the last week, ladies and gentlemen. We, we split the, the show up in two parts – uh, so this is part two with John, but I got to tell you, and I mentioned last week, uh, been around this business for a long time. There is only one John Nord. And uh, mm -hmm. when we when we first found out that we were going to have John on the show, I was ecstatic because he is a phenomenal individual. And in the history of AWA wrestling, you know, he came in kind of towards the end, so he doesn't get the the credit that he deserves. But as a yeah. as a person, uh, I just love the guy. So looking forward to part two. I agree with everything that you just said, Mick. John Nord, I, I, I got to put him into my favorite one of my favorites list of the uh, of the talent that I worked with uh, in the AWA. It was nothing but respectful to me, and gave me joy as I'm editing the matches. Gave me something different. Whether it's a yeah. mop across the head or or, or you name it, uh, that was the entertainment as I was spending hours and hours of editing AWA program. Just bring it, oh, Greg. Oh my god! Yeah, it's, I mean, and it's funny because you get you get individuals and you kind of see like, okay, well maybe this person, the character is like the individual, like like nobody. I don't think anybody saw this side of John Nord that we're seeing now. And it's like, if you're going to be out, I know that we promoted the show last week. If you're going to be out in Los Angeles for WrestleMania, WrestleCon, we'll put the information up there again. But getting a chance to see him do his show, it's going to be an absolute blast. And if you're looking for something to do Mania, uh, you want to find these hidden gems, you're going to get, I mean, this is just the tip of the iceberg for, for what we're getting. So uh, that being said, guys, let's go ahead and bring him back in. And, there he uh, is. There's, there he is now. There's the man of the hour right there. He also has not uh, worn that Twins hoodie for the entire week. Oh, I think you need it, John. Yeah. I should have a Columbia wrestling because my son is the uh, wrestling coach at Columbia University. So, Oh, he oh. is? Yeah, he is. Uh, so he sends me Columbia stuff. They're Ivy League. You know, they're not. A wrestling icon, but they're usually about 25th in the country type thing. They're hey. not Big Ten, but he's a wonderful kid. I just I could have had three better kids on God's green earth, and you guys know how I feel about your own kids. Of course, yeah. is there anything well, better, John? And I wanted to let the listeners know too. We're an AWA podcast, so what we're focusing on with John is his AWA tenure and before he got in. And and needless to say, whether it was down in world class, whether it was in WC WWF, John Nor a big deal in this business. And and we're not ignoring that part of his career. We're just focusing on the AWA. Okay. That's yeah. good for me to know too, yeah. Nick. Yeah. There you go. So, <laughs> yeah, no, I mean it really is because yeah. I forget, I don't want to Stray, but I, I tell you that it's it's the guys. If I do go off, it's just because I'm telling about the guys, you know. No, absolutely. And an example, Mick, would be like Nikita Kovac, Scott, you know. 
Oh yeah, um, what? Well, that's an, yeah. another buddy of yours, you know? Yeah. From back yeah. in the day, you know. I, just real quick before uh, I, I think Chris is going to kick this off. You mentioned okay. well, I, and well, I, I do, I do have something else I want to kick it off because we've got a picture that I think okay. we were talking about earlier. <laughs> we'll start. We'll start with that. Oh, okay. okay. Go ahead. Go ahead. Okay. Well, I, I know uh, John Justin had sent me this picture, and we were kind of figuring out. We were trying to figure out. Who might be in this picture with you? And I think some forensic evidence uh, we were doing before we started recording. And I think they may have gotten it narrowed down to uh, who that individual is. Kind of, Do you remember that picture? First of all, I know we're kind of off the cuff, but do you remember that picture? And does it does it jog any any sort of memories? Because I think Mick and Joe may have figured out the other person. Yeah, it does. Definitely. Uh, and uh, I know the, the pros are going to guess it right away. Well, you know, we, we were kind of torn, but but Joe, tell them what our, our theory is here. We're not positive. So my first inclination, John, was to yeah. say that that's Leon Bullpower White. You crushed it. There Absolutely. it is. And it was in, uh, where's that girl from? Illinois? Uh, she's like oh, from oh, Rockford, Joyce. Illinois. Joyce, is that her name? Yep, yep, Joyce. Yeah, and a super sweet person. And that was 86 and Leon. And I and Leon was a wonderful guy. He's passed. And I remember really being rough on Leon because you know I had my uh uh, there we go. We were we were marking our territory on who's tough and who ain't, and I ain't gonna let this Leon White come in, think he's gonna. And I was really stiff. And uh, he went through, I believe, the second Brad Rankin's camp. Is that right, you guys? Yeah. That's Sounds right. about right. Yeah. And, you know, it was this territorial thing. And I feel so bad. But, oh, Leon ended up just doing great Japan. I mean, he made a lot of big money quick. Well, John, real quick, do you remember another uh, uh, former NFL football player that uh, went to the same camp and broke into the AWA? With Leon, was that Boyd? Greg Boyd. Boyd, yeah, yep. Floyd. Greg yeah. Boyd. It's all like my grandpa now. <laughs> Growing up, every word. Floyd. Yeah, Greg, that's Richard yeah, Noyd. Yeah, I heard he's a great guy. I met him a couple times. I didn't get to know him. Yeah, yeah, but they were two very, very large human beings. Leon was very green in the beginning, but yeah, as you said, I think he did all right for himself. He was the real deal. You know, Leon per se what didn't didn't have that flow in the locker room type thing, but he he was such a physical specimen. You know, he was third round draft choice. I think about a hundredth player overall. I mean, that oh. ain't no joke. Uh, and I think he was center, if I'm right. Um, but yeah, uh, just uh, uh, John Legendary Vader, you know. You know, John, yeah. you, you mentioned that you got a little rough with uh, with Leon. Yeah. I I would venture that over the years, stories have certainly backed up. Yeah. Leon got rough with more than one or two guys uh, over yeah. the duration of his career, too. So, you know. Oh, there you go. I think it went full. No, no question. That's a really good point. That's a really good point. And I heard that, too, you know. But anytime you got rough, it's we we gave it all to 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 be good for the business. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. No, that ain't bad. No, I, I, I wanna man. Yeah. No, no, it's not I, I want I wanna yeah, I, I wanna ask you here, John, because I know a lot of people, you know, they know you from well, let's just say a lot of people did TV commercials, you know, Matt, ah, Bob, Jesse, Crusher, Baron. I don't yeah. think anybody was more popular than your television commercials. Yeah, I appreciate it, Chris. You know, we again, uh, it was short but intense, and we were real, really popular. We played that commercial where I slammed the guy through the windshield. No credit, we don't care. No down payment, we still <laughs> don't care. Don't make your payment. Car crash, 85 rib, candy glass windshield. I crushed it, and I heard the guy's rib crack, and I had to finish the commercial. And I'm going, that's right. Then we care. But I hear the guy behind me going, (laughs) (laughs) 
Uh, he was a mechanic. I gave him a hundred dollar bill to sign off on a lawsuit. <laughs> That's no BS, too. That is no BS. Remember when we had the AWA All Stars versus the KQ All Stars in the football at the God, Metrodome? Good call. Nobody remembers that, you guys, except well, you oh guys. My God, they, they did that. They did that. Oh, like, yeah. oh yeah, KQ All oh Stars against the AWA All Stars in the Metrodome flag football, or maybe it was two hand touch. I, that I don't remember. AWA it was live on the touch. line, Joe. What's that? It was live on the line, though. Yeah. Oh, no, no doubt about it. But the reason I brought that up, by the way, I played in every game um, yeah, yeah. Uh, that I think we had, I know it was at least two, maybe it had three. But the very first one, there was a, um, uh, uh, a broadcaster from the KQ Morning Show yeah. by the name of Mike Gelfand, better known as Stretch. And after the first game, you picked him up. Yeah. And body slammed him on the car. The next day, he was so pissed. I mean, yeah. he, he was about 125 yeah, pounds. Yeah, I know. And that was not planned. Uh, so he, I caught him a little off guard there. He, I think he was doing the, hey, too. You know, so, but yeah, that was great. You know, here, here we are. We're live on the line. Scott Norton is on the other side. I'm trying to block Scott Norton. That wasn't real fun. And then on our line was Dave Casper, Bob Lertzema. Oh. I mean, you had some real – Kevin Kelly was a linebacker. The guy could have played for the Cowboys if he would have had a head, Kevin, uh, you know. But I still talk to Kevin. And, yeah, he, he was extremely athletic, Kevin. But, he, you know, he was uh, – uh, he'd done some things. No That's all I'm going to say. No <laughs> you know, well, just li little things, Mick, like rob banks, kill guys. Okay. Nothing too nothing too serious, Kev. Okay, well, good. As long as it, you know, as long as yeah. it stays, you know, safe and, and you know. Yeah, it, it was family friendly. Oh, dear God. Um, and, and Mike Stretch, Gelfand, um, getting slammed through a car windshield by you, mm. I, I wish I would have seen that. Um, let alone hear his calls of agony yeah. and uh, <laughs> moans and groans. Um, yeah, that was a great night. We still had pitch. We, I think I still got pictures, but it was, yeah, it was, it was hot. Well, we done that commercial, you guys, and we ran it six times during the 87 Vikings, October 87. And it was just caught fire. And Monday morning, me and my dad and brothers go into the car lot on Highway 10. And we go there. There's 150 people waiting to see what this is about. Oh, you know, probably, wow. I think we sold 25 cars that day. But there was also a couple hundred people that just had to see what the heck was going on. I love that. And, you know, I, I'm reminded of one of your great lines in your promos when you would come out and you would say, there's only one guy in this world <laughs> that I fear, and I call him Dad. Yeah, he lives in Brooklyn Center, and I call him Dad. Oh, God. I love it. I love it. We're going we're gonna to kind of shift gears here, and I'm looking forward to this because we're going to talk about uh, some, of the, some of the peers, uh, some of the guys that you uh, worked with back in the day. We're going to put some pictures up. And, uh, you know, John, if you just got a couple of sentences, a couple sure. of memories of the guys, sure, uh, we will uh, we'll relive some of the memories. So uh, if the pictures are going to cranked up, I'm going to get cranked up. Joe um, and, and Chris, we talked about this guy earlier on. Brad Ringitz. Talk a little bit about Brad. From what I understand, John, his strength is absolutely legendary. It really is. Uh Brad uh, is still an extremely great friend of mine. I talk to him all the time. He lives in Fargo, very secluded. But in his day, uh, everybody, there was one night where everybody talked about it was when he bellied to back Blackwell. And me and Brad call it a belly to Blackwell. 
you know. Yeah. But he wow. picked up Jerry Blackwell, and Jerry wasn't even trying to work with him. He just did it out of pure strength. And absolutely correct, Mick. One of the strongest guys you'll ever grab onto. His back, the first time I touched his back, it was like a kitchen counter. I went, what? Yeah. No finer guy around. I, I've long said about Brad that if he would have been able to do a promo, he would have gone somewhere in the business. That was yeah. not a strong suit, but inside those ropes, I know. he was as good as it got. Yeah, and he, he, he had a great eight-year run in Japan. Uh, incredible. Him and Saito, and he made a lot of money and uh, basically was our connection to Japan. If you good were going guy. to Japan, you had to go through Brad Rankin's. Nice. Good. Great guy. All right, we're, we're going to continue on, and we've talked about this guy uh, incessantly, one of the great rivers of all time. Uh, we're talking about Kurt Hennig. Uh, you know, we, you talked a lot about Kurt on the last show. Yeah. But again, a guy who left us much, much too oh. soon. To me, John, and I don't know your assessment of this, I think yeah. in the 1980s, I don't think anybody was better working than Kurt Hennig. Nope, I am in a hundred percent in agreement. He, but that's because Kurt Henning cared about that business. He cared about being respectful. He cared about. I never seen a guy so mad when that Eddie Mansfield. Uh, we were sitting in, I think Milwaukee or something, and when he uh, Mansfield stooged it out, Kurt went crazy. Kurt Henning loved that business, and this business owes a lot to Kurt Henning because of his talent, his hard work. Nobody worked harder. He went through camp. You know what? You'd get guys stopping by the wrestling camp when I broke in in October 84. Um, I didn't see any guys stop by except Kurt Henning. He would go, and we would pummel, you know. He would work out with the guys. There's a guy. There's a real dude, man. And he kept that all of his life. Um, and what I what I do remember is when Kurt Henning got the Lloyds of London check for five, yes. 564 grand. I'm working at Brookdale Ford, suit and car. He pulls in and I go, Curtis Michael, how you doing? He pulls out a check and just kind of waves it like this from my face. I said, what, what's that? 564 grand. And we went down to Citizen State Bank and deposited. We go into the lobby. He says, yeah, can I open up a account here? I'm right next to him. We're ready. He's already told the niece he's going to be gone for a day or two. <laughs> Um, you know, you can always buy wives. So, you know, can I go out tonight if I give you $500, honey? Okay, good deal. Anyway, God bless their hearts. We're nothing without them. Anyway, so he says, he says, do I get something for depositing this? Well, a guy looks at it, and this is no business. He goes, yeah. He goes, I can get you a clock radio. And I stepped in. I go, how about like 10 of them? And the guy took me serious. He went out in the back room, got a box of clock radios, 10 of them. And me and Kurt were off. And this is what Henning was doing the rest of the night. This is this is right after he got his teeth fixed. So I used to call his teeth little sunflower seed teeth, you know, growing up. And uh, and he had always laugh and try. But then he got him fixed because his wife's uh, parents are dentist is a dentist. And he would take his watch, he'd roll up his sleeve, and he'd shine it off his teeth. Oh. Like like it was sparkling off his feet. Oh, come on. Is that Kurt Henning? That's Kurt. Oh. oh. God, I love uh, it. Yeah, but, uh, yeah, I, I don't think we, you guys know exactly what I mean. And I'm telling you, uh, we're indebted to Kurt Henning. Consummate professional, no question about it. You mentioned how he would come out to the training camp even when he had made it so big, I remember there would be independent shows at like the, the main event. Exactly. Or and he would he would go and hang out with the guys. He never forgot. Isn't the- that great? Yeah, absolutely. I mean, it. Uh, he never once uh, had an air that he loved being famous, you know, but 
he was there. And, uh, yeah, what might guy. be the best of the best. And, and speaking of guys that, uh, you know, among the best of the best, uh, let's talk about a guy that you and I are certainly both very familiar with, and that's Mr. Bockwinkle. Ah, Nicholas Bach. Yes, Nicholas Bach. Nicholas Bach. Nick. Yeah. Oh, I'll tell you what, again, uh, worked with Nick. Uh, uh, he, he was a, a wrestling genius, um, I would say. And uh, the guys were ribbing him. Here we go. We're ribbing Nick. He's the old guy. He thinks he knows everything. And he's arrogant. And, you know, we're putting his 8 by 10 in the urinals and oh, no. on it. Yeah, stiff, stiff stuff. Oh, but, but I, here's what I said. Then we wait, start. Did, did you did you say you put his eight by ten in urinals and you were shitting on? Yeah, and Vern's Vern's <laughs> office in Wyzetta. Oh, Nicholas Box doing an interview, and I love Nick Bockwick. I'll only tell one bad thing. Oh. Uh, <laughs> Kurt grabs an eight by ten of them, puts it in the urinal of the Wyzetta. Uh, uh, where we did promos. Another guy goes in and poops on it. Oh, then Nick goes in and sees it. And he's like this the rest of the time. I mean, he was pissed. Then we got a free ride to Sheboygan to go salmon fishing. And we got two boats. Vern gets us two boats for all the wrestlers to go. Well, we all climb on one boat. Snooker, sure. me, Hanning. All the guys that are fierce drinkers and whatever else. And Nick's on the other boat all by himself, going by us. Like, and I still feel bad, but it wasn't intentional. We were so young and had so much damn energy. You got Buddy Rose falling asleep at the hotel bar Imagine you know, on, on the plaster deals. And that Nick hated that. Because Nick was trying to protect the business. Yes, absolutely. And I get it. And I had a thing at Walzer Ford when I was the used car manager. I brought all the wrestlers there for one Saturday. And I apologized to Nick. I said, Nick. And Nick was the first guy there, did it for nothing. And I said, Nick, I just want to apologize. I had young man's disease, man. And Nick couldn't have been any more gracious, any kinder. He was just absolutely a great guy. And I mean that God, he made me feel good when I seen him. You know, that that's such a great story. And, and the picture that you paint of Nick and his reactions and, and everything else. And I had heard that there was real heat between he and, and buddy, uh, Paul Perchman. There was. I never quite knew what it was, but I knew that it was Nick kind of, you know, overseeing and being protective of, of the business, yeah. and they were button heads. They were. Um, what happened one night was Nick somehow got on a second party line talking to Vern, or was it Greg? I think it was Greg. And Buddy, I don't know if Buddy would make up, but he swore he heard them talking. And then, of course, the big thing was you don't stooge on the boys. Right. And of course, Nick was stooging, and that's what he did. But he was just trying to keep the sanity. It, you, you know, know it, 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 it wasn't easy. I mean, with those, with the personalities back then and, oh uh, my God. you know, Nick was professional and he defended the business to a fault. So. And, and, and he drew money. And it was a, when, if it was a Bachwinkle versus Vern, that was going to be a class act. And it yeah. was, it was going to probably sell out the civic center which made everybody else on the card money, right? There you go. There you go. Yeah, absolutely. You know, let, let's talk a little bit more about Vern. Um, so many stories, you know, depending on who you are, what your relationship was with Vern. Um, what, what, did, did you have a lot of interaction? I mean, outside of the, the connection with, you know, your father-in-law's uh, yeah. friend, when it came time to actually work the shows, was Greg your contact or was it Vern that you went through for instructions, payoffs, and what have you? Uh, both, both. Uh, and I was going to say, as uh, Chris Markoff used to say, the bald-headed man. See, the bald-headed man. 
Anyways, yeah, he was. Uh, uh, Greg would try to convey it, and Greg didn't have no easy job being Vern Gagne's son, right. but he was so condescending in his style that nobody, everybody just took it hard because he had that twinge of being condescending. Now, Vern, you know, one night he gave me the finishes, you know, and I felt really honored. You know, like, hey, he's yeah. giving the barbarian the finishes. He thinks I'm going to actually show up and work on. I guess I am okay. You know, so it made me feel good. But I had a special place with Vern because of that connection. He got me my first job in Mid-South. And I didn't even know what the heck was going on. He just says, you're going to Louisiana. I said, okay. I mean, I've been married four months. Got a beautiful little bride at home from Robbinsville. And... So I just went to Mid-South, and it turned out that Vern called Bill Watts in December 84 and said, I got a kid. Take care of him. He's my best friend's son-in-law, and uh, I'm going to send him down there. He's greener than grass. So I take my 85 Lincoln um, and head south to Shreveport, Louisiana, stopped at Jimmy Garvin's house in in Eden Prairie, used his size 12 boots, or 11. They were a little too small. I didn't even know what the hell I was doing. I'm like, okay, what do I do in Louisiana? I didn't even know there were other territories, you know? I mean, sure. it was back then. Cable just started. And I remember when I was with Watts, and Watts pushed me, you know? That's why it was fun, but I didn't even know it. But I got on the mic and here my family's watching at home. They had a cable package. And so they got Mid-South for us in 85. And my first interview, I'm going to LaRanger, Louisiana. And I said, and I got my head shaved and I'm dead like this. I says, why does everybody in LaRanger have summer tea? Some are yellow and some are missing. You know, my family drops on the living room floor laughing. <laughs> and that was, and of course, I, 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 I've got to say, I've been looking for that interview, and I think it's dead. I cheap, think it's cheap heat, John. That's, it, uh, it was cheap heat. And yeah, it was I, I, maybe a little too cartoonish, Nord. I says, you think so? It's the story of my life. I'm a walking freaking cartoon, you know? <laughs> so... <laughs> Well, Johnny, you, you, you had said, you know, Vern got you your first gig. Um, but once you got established, I, I mean, you were with the AWA, then you left for a while, you came back, and then you ended up going to Vince. Yeah, yeah. To, to tell our viewers, uh, from, from the perspective of a professional wrestler, um, did did you contact promoters or did they contact you? Was it word association with the boys? I mean, how how does a talent and in particular particular yourself get booked into other territories? Well, good question, Joe. And it's a little bit different each time, you know. But basically, it's it's who you know. But I'm selling cars, and. Uh, I always did good selling cars, so I was never, I was always had that cush that my other guys might not have had. So that's why I was in and out, in and out. But I had Henning in the WWF, and I had uh, Darso, and and they were my go to guys. And uh, uh, we, uh, I'm sitting there, and and uh, this was December 1990. And the WWF calls me at the car lot and says, hey, we got a, maybe a movie part for you. We're sending you tickets. You're going to go try out for a movie. Well, I go to the hotel in L.A., go to the hotel bar. Who's there sitting there? The Undertaker, oh. Mark Cowan. And Mark's sitting there. He says, hey. I mean, I knew him from Japan a couple of times, and we roomed together. So we, we, we got we, – I, I could make him laugh really hard. And sure enough, we both try out for the movie, and I think it was Suburban Commando. Sound right? Mm -hmm. yeah. yep. Anyways, we go back. I didn't practice my lines. I didn't do nothing. I was just like, I'm reading off the paper going, uh, uh, and I fucked it up so bad. Excuse my language. 
And, of course, Mark went in there after me, and he crushed it. And I go back to the hotel bar, and I says, hey. He comes right up. He goes, yeah, brother, I got the part. I want to tell you. I guess, ah, okay. Okay, so I kind of, uh, he thought I felt bad, but I really did. That's what got me in. And then uh, uh, I flew out January, I think, 90, and met with Pat and Vince. They called me because uh, I told Henning and Darso, put in a word. I got to get yeah. out of this car lot. I got to get away from the car lot. Please get me in. Flew out, sat, sat there with Pat Patterson, and he says, Ah, uh, you guy, uh, uh, I heard the one thing about to you. And I said, Oh, why? He goes, uh, you're told to go left and you take a right. And I said, yeah, I said, Pat, uh, and in walks Vince. I says, hey, Vince, true story all the way. I said, Vince, I was, yeah, I just want to appreciate you guys flying me out. I says, yeah, I said, that's the old John. Um, you know, we're young and dumb, right? What else am I going to say? They understood that right away. They didn't beat a, I, they didn't miss a beat. But, of course, they didn't know I was just starting out being dumb. <laughs> <laughs> right so i go to this costume room and they go what do you feel like i said i don't know kind of wild and stuff they wouldn't i wanted to be the barbarian and they wouldn't do it because it was uh, i had it nor the barbarian trademark but they wouldn't do the barbarian and then they made me the viking okay well i was the viking for two matches picked out the costume turned out some guy in japan had the Viking trademarked. So now Vince comes up to me. He goes, we're going to make you the berserker, John. Uh, that's a form of the Vikings and this and that. I wasn't always real comfortable with the name, you know, but I just went with it because they slapped it on me. And one thing you learn is if Vince slaps something on you, you don't go, you don't go crosswise. You just run with it the best sure. you can. Sure, and that's man. all I did. What 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 a great story! I, you know, a couple of I want to sidetrack a little bit. You know, we, we, you talk about all the guys that helped you along the way. You know, the Barry Darsels and what have you. Yeah. Bottom line, though, John, that if you weren't talented, it doesn't matter who you've got in your pocket. You had you had the capability. You had the stuff, and the promoters saw it. And, you know, mm -hmm. like Joe mentioned, you know, last yeah. week you did Brody as, you know, as yeah. well as Brody did. So I wouldn't uh, shorten yourself in any way. You were one talented yeah. SOB in that ring. Very yeah. believable. Well, thanks. Uh, uh, don't sell yourself short, Judge. You're a big slouch. No, I'm just joking. <laughs> 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 but, yeah, no. And, uh, of course, now I work for Virgo Brothers Promotions. I got to plug Justin here. Anyways, yeah, thanks, Mick. That's really nice to you. You know, one thing that was always in my head was I wanted to have good matches, and I wanted to work out. I wanted to be in shape. Sometimes – if you look, a guy's in a lot worse shape than what he is in other matches sure. because he's out drinking. Most of the time, I was just out pounding him too much. Shit, how are you going to stay with a good build if you're out every night laughing, you know? And it was. It was It was such the, – the, the times after the matches were just incredible, and you guys know that. John, before we get back to the, uh, the list of, uh, you know, your peers, where was it that you worked with Akbar? Uh, in what territory and what kind of a relationship did you have with him? Skandar Akbar. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, he would walk by the, the locker room and he'd be having this big cigar and he walked like this, you know, like a bull-legged Greek or something. And he walked like that. And one day we go, hey. You're Grandpa, you look like Grandpa Munster. The guy looks like Al Lewis to the T, if you ever seen him. he. So we called him Grandpa Munster. So I'd go up to him, hey, Grandpa, where's Lily? Where's Lily? He'd go, shut up, you son of a bitch. <laughs> anyway, <laughs> yeah. And anyways, great guy. was was my manager for a short time because he was the sheik of the South. You know? Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Well, I really appreciate that because I'm never going to look at Akbar again the same way. Now yeah. I'm going to see Al Lewis every time. Yeah. You know, I, yeah. I, Just think to yourself, hey, Grandpa, where's Lily? <laughs> <laughs> oh, 
I, I love it. All right, let, let's uh, let's get back to a, a couple more of the names, and we're going to kind of be jumping around here a little bit. Uh, when you were in the AWA, a guy was just coming in, and he eventually uh, was the champion in the AWA. And you know, many of you said about the nepotism and you know Vern's daughter-in-law and what have yeah. you. Yeah. Give me some. Uh, give me some. Your take on Larry Zabisco. Larry Nabisco. Okay, Larry. Yeah, Chicago boy. Uh, Larry was a tough one because he just he would he would he was like a miniature Nicholas Bach, okay. except in his own way. And Larry was a good guy. He loved the business. Absolutely loved it. Uh, uh, but the arrogance just kept him from getting too close to anybody. You know, he just, Interesting. you know what I, uh, you know, if that sounds right, and I don't mean that in any way, oh, but okay. of course he met Kathy and uh, he, uh, uh, they, they fell in love in that, uh, at least for a while. Uh, and uh, Larry was a really good worker and a great promo. Oh, uh, what a promo. I mean, remember the one where he was going, I had a dream and it was, I was flying on the plane and, you know, he just goes into the zone when he's doing his promo and that's a true professional, super nice guy. Wasn't my style though, you know, Larry, uh, maybe cause he wasn't from Robbins Hill. I mean, should you even be breathing air? If you're not, <laughs> I mean, what, what did I miss? You know, how many guys, you know, we're walking around with half nipples. Us guys. <laughs> That's how Boy. you know you're from Robinsdale. Yeah. It's like, the, it's like the mark you, of the beast. Yeah. My nipple. Could you lift your shirt? Yes. Okay. <laughs> you know, is that on the water tower in Robinsdale now? Like a half nipple? Yeah. 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 No, yeah. Well, yeah, it is. the half And the Kurt Henny nipple. You know, he had nipples. Uh, the, uh, I used to tell him it was smaller than a dime, you know. He had those little Kurt Henny nipples, you know. And... Uh, you're lucky you didn't lose the whole nipple, Curtis Michael. Oh you know? my God! You know, you know, it's it's great because I know that Hank, uh, Kurt's son, and uh. and these listen to the podcast, and uh, I'm sure that they are really gonna enjoy it. Well, I seen him at the last deal, Hank and Lenise, and oh, Lenise, what a sweetheart! She gave me one of the best compliments. She came up to me and said, "You know what?" And you know, Lenise, she she cries at hockey games. Oh yeah. <laughs> um, and she she comes up to me and says, "John, I'll say one thing about you and Kurt. You had each other's back." Oh. Does that make you feel any better than that? That's, there. And is. of course, Lenise was a sweetheart from Robbinsdale. Yeah. You know, walking well, around. Again, you know, there again, Robbinsdale legendary. You know, you got to you breathe in the air. Hey, you, you graduate nine hundred. I'll say this about Robinsdale that don't ever get we graduated 800 and some people. There was more good looking girls at Robinsdale than you will ever know. They were just oh <laughs> wow. Whoa, daddy oh you got a little steam coming out of that yeah. head. Not yeah, here. oh yeah. And of course, me, you know, I'm uh, I'm running around the hallways getting tripped by Tom Zink in my uh <laughs> In my farmer jeans and uh, watching Darso, uh, you know, uh, do his thing and and Curtis Michaels uh, imitating Flip with that Billy Graham. So it went on and on. It was great. And oh, Scott God. Simpson, Scott Simpson, the serious man. Uh, oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Scotty, want, I got to tell you real quick, I was having a sure. dinner out at my house in Andover, all the guys handing Darso. Uh, Rick couldn't make it, uh, Scott Simpson, and a couple other dudes. And I'm having dinner, and I got Jim, my wife. And at the bottom of the driveway, we lived on kind of a hill. Bottom of the driveway, they're, they're hey, come on in, guys. Yeah. We're, we're. And now Scott shows up. He says, hey, he weighs me like this. I go, <laughs> okay. So I go walking over him. He goes, hey, John, I'm Nikita. Oh, they call me Nikita here. I'm like going, Everybody in there grew up with you, Scott. <laughs> I'm thinking, right? And he's going, oh, 
Please, Ole, Ole Russell, okay? I don't know if the fricker guy is joking or not. So now I pull, now I'm thinking, okay, that son of a bitch is too into this stuff. I got to stop. I got to stop the madness here. The buck stops here, Mr. Simpson. I'm thinking. So I go back up in the house. He grabs whatever. Now he comes in. He says, only call me the key. Opens up the door. Everybody's there. I yell. I yell out, Scotty! (laughs) He goes like this. Oh, no. oh, I tremendous. thought he was going to cry. That is tremendous. <laughs> then I seen, hey, you guys, I seen him at that gathering deal last summer. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I did the same thing. I go, Scotty, and I'm not shitting. He goes, you haven't changed. <laughs> We're a little serious, aren't we, Scotty? Oh, my God. That, that's some, he was pissed. Well, he legit changed. He changed his name legit, didn't he? He, he went to the county and changed his name. That's where I had to draw the line. I said, sir, oh. Scotty, you go changing your name. Now I have no mercy. <laughs> so he, Scott was doing Nikita Koloff when he was still playing college football. Because I, I, I know some of the guys that he played college football with. He was doing Nikita Koloff. Was he? Was he? He, he was he – was, Doing the Russian gimmick. Now, I don't know if it was Nikita, but he was doing Maybe, the yeah. Gimmick. Well, he was awful good at it. Maybe he was. And, well, I'll tell you what happened. Scott wanted to be a pro football player. I played with him. I graduated with him. And we both wanted to be. I'd say we're – anyways, and and he was uh, – went up to Moorhead, uh, and he got uh, – there was a kid up there named John Eckel, and he had one hand. But Eckel was tougher than – can be. He runs into him. It's like run into a wall. Then you got Dan Johnson, who played for the Dolphins. That is a good buddy of ours. I went to Cooper, and he ran into him. So his foot. He ran into guys that were just a lot better than him, and just crushed them the way anybody crushes a guy. You know that's just better than him. And Scott never dealt with that good, but he he's Scott's a wonderful Christian man. I get where he's coming from. And and I love them sincerely, you know. But I, I, I just want to keep life a little, you know, like you. I'm with you guys. We're going to keep it funny. You know, it, it's it's uh, it's interesting yeah. because both Scott and Ivan Koloff, uh, yeah. boy, they took that Russian gimmick. Holy and, and man, talk about believable! I mean, that, oh, that, yeah. that was really, really something. Now, Jim Lanning, when Jim came in yeah. and sold out Houston, off, I think Jim tried. Yeah, but you know he he wasn't on the level of uh, of Ivan and, and Nikita. Jim looked like an unmade bed, you know. <laughs> you know, Jim looked like an unmade bed, and he was the he was a big guy. He we called him the dancing bear. We did. We called him the dancing bear because uh, I went down in USFL for the San Antonio Gunslingers, and uh, I got hurt. But that, that's what the that's what the Old line coach called Jim was the dancing bear. Oh my god! Yeah, funny. I, but Jim, I, I, Jim, what a sweet guy. He's North. He's a security guard at North Memorial Hospital. Still, I think big, big dude, and, and what a what a nice guy. Hell of a he is, but he did have that intensity. When you seen one thing about Scott, uh, you seen that athleticism in him. Yeah, yeah, you know, and that's what the people bought, and that's what sold tickets. They believe I, him. I love the unmade bed line. That is, that's yeah, that's kind of that's kind of, that's kind of an old one, I guess. But yeah, we're gonna use it. We're gonna run with that. God, one. I've it's never good. heard. I've never heard somebody <laughs> compared to an unnamed bed. That's, Scotty, Scotty hates uh, that. You guys, you got to use it on. Just get ready to duck. You know, uh, another <laughs> Russian that I'll um, I'll put in the same. I'll say not believable for me as a Russian. Yeah. Boris Zukov. Yeah, Boris. But yeah, it was had, always, yeah, it was always fun to listening to Vern. You know, go over to finish with Boris. You go now. You got this big head, <laughs> and Jimmy Harrow. Jim, Jimmy's going. Oh, that's really nice, you Vern. <laughs> well, he says, uh, "Let's face it, Jimmy. It's a, you're a freak." And I'm like, "Oh, Jesus, Vern, take it easy." <laughs> oh my God. right. 
Can you imagine saying that to a guy? And no. then, of course, you got Adnan and, and Jimmy Jimmy Harrell. Get this. You guys are going to love He, in the shower, he had this huge towel that went from his armpits to the middle of his shins, and he would wear it and walking by guys, you know, some guys are just more self-conscious yeah, in the yeah. shower. I know I am, but I didn't. And Adnan would jump on him. Why do you want to, why do you got the towel on that? You just, well, are you afraid? You know, are you afraid? <laughs> Look at this guy. And poor, just poor us. Like, I think the guy left the territory, just get the hell away from Adnan and burn. <laughs> That is, uh, that is that was was Boris at the gathering this last time? No, I don't think so. If you okay. watch him, I don't. Have you, know. you seen pictures of him lately? No. Have oh you? boy, he's. Uh, was he? You right? would never. You would not recognize him. Really? Uh, Old. Lost a lot of weight. Uh, long hair on the back. You know. Really? Front, but yeah. You, uh, Where's the the bib overalls and you know lives lives life on the farm down well, wherever he is? And, yeah. Let's call him and tell him he's a freak. Yeah. <laughs> God, Vern. Boy, Vern really knew how to put. He, you over, oh didn't? God, he was yeah. about love. Yeah, he was right. about love. <laughs> he, he was, Kevin Kelly's got a couple of really good stories. Oh yeah. He oh, Kevin wow. walked up to Vern once in the locker room. He says, "Hi, uh, uh, my name's." Uh, 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 Kevin Wachholz, I work for you. And Bernie goes, no, you don't. Kevin's huh. like, huh? He goes, oh, no, but I do. He goes, no, you don't. <laughs> Bern was lost. He was like, you know, Kevin. And then, of course, I got the Kevin beating up Vince story, but that's yeah, not yeah. AWA, so we're going to, right? We're going to keep oh, it we're, Well, first of all, we're having you back. I mean, ah, yes, I, yeah, I, I, I have to, I have to hear that because that's one of like the most infamous stories. So we'll, have, was, yeah, we'll, we'll have to, yeah, yeah, we'll get into that one. But yeah, that one was uh, the real macaroni, uh, wow. and uh, and I, I know exactly why Kevin did it, and it's about certain guys. Do you guys know guys that smoke pot, right? Oh. Some guys just are not going to give it up till the day they die. You have to accept that with people. And yeah. as far as I'm concerned, this stuff's harmless. Yeah, exactly. But that's what that story centered around. We'll talk oh, about we're, we're, we're okay. going to have some fun with that one. There's yeah. Two. Well, we're gonna, I, I have one more question to, to kind of wrap it up here. But before I do that, I, I want to tell you, and I know I speak for, for Chris <laughs> and Joe. I don't think I have enjoyed a podcast more than this one. John, I, you're a... Uh, you are a gem. Uh, uh, people that yes. that, uh, that don't know you uh, and have gotten to know you through yeah. this podcast, seeing a, a completely different side of you. Um, but I've Thank known you. you for a lot of years, and, yeah. and I'm telling you, you are a class act, and you are welcome back here on this show anytime, buddy. You are your aces. You well, are, I'm, I'm honored. You guys are exactly like I thought you would be. And uh, uh, I appreciate the compliments. I, I'm going to tell you something. I uh, uh, like I said at the beginning. You know, yeah, you, you always want to say clever stuff and all that, but really, what's in my heart is nothing but gratitude for you guys to keep this AWA thing going, Chris, Mick, and Joel. Uh, and and I'm serious. It it's it really makes my heart feel good. Um, and Mick, I was there when you got your plaque. That thought that was just awesome. And this ain't no. I'm I'm just exactly like you guys. This is what we had to do. We got to keep this going. Please keep it going, you guys. I got Fantastic. nothing but love yeah. for you, dudes, man. Fantastic. Same here. Fantastic. Right back at you, Johnny. Yes. Thank you, Joe. Thank you, Christopher. The semi controversial, always well dressed. Chris Dove. <laughs> Why are you wearing the towel? <laughs> Grandpa <Yeah>. Munster. <laughs> oh, God. Oh, God. This was so good. Yeah. Well, the Leon White thing got picked quick, but I had uh, Justin, my. Uh, and you know what? I just want to give you guys a heads up if you're if you're ever talking to uh, my man Justin. 
on, you know, whatever you guys do on that computer. I don't even know what it's called. Anyways, he is uh, a top shelf class dude. Sure is. Yes, he's, yes. he's just like us, you guys, everybody here. And man, I love you guys. I want to reach out and hug you. Oh, John, this has been tremendous. You are, like I say, you're welcome back anytime, buddy. Matter of fact, you know, you, you could, whenever <laughs> Tupic is on vacation, um, yeah. which which hopefully is will be quite often. Maybe okay. once in a while you could uh, you know even even sit in the for uh, for two. What wait a minute? What are you doing there, Joe? I just got an itch. Oh, Joe. you just got an itch. Okay, Joe. Well, that's in. Joe, yeah, Joe. There's a uh, he's a Polak. Come on. <laughs> <laughs> well, yeah. I think he was counting well, there. Oh, oh. Yeah. Well, uh, the dancing bear too here. Oh, okay. yeah. Oh man, an unmade. John, I love you, dude. You guys, are... John, take care of yourself, my man. You are the best. Thanks, everybody. God, I love you, dudes. Thank you. Talk to you soon. Thanks. All right, All right. there he is, John Nord. We'll uh, we'll come back to him after we're we're done wrapping it up. By the way, on the bottom of the scroll, if you guys are planning on heading out to WrestleMania out in Los Angeles, got to tell you, from having been at Manias as a fan. It's everything about that weekend and not like the event itself. To me, it's about everything else around it. And you want to find those hidden gems and those events that are going to really give you the memories. If you want to hear this in person and you want to meet John, check him out at WrestleCon. Uh, the folks at High Spots and Michael Pagikio do a great job. Uh, it's just a meet and greet convention chance to go out and hobnob. You can meet John, uh, out in Los Angeles, March 31st through April 2nd, all that information as well. Plus, if you want one of these, uh, interpersonal shows, a story where you can get up a, you know, close with him and the grappler telling road stories, of course, the, uh, the breakfast club, the, uh, that story from tales from the territories, not going to get into it. But uh, John will get into that more. Uh, that's going to be at icehousecomedy.com. Check it out. The show's at 9.30 on March 31st. And, uh, again, it's uh, shit. It's uh, that stuff. It, uh, it gets good. So uh, we'll get back to John again uh, here in a minute when we're done. But uh, is that, whose dog is that? That's not my dog. That, uh, Mad Dog. So Mad dog. dog. Yes. Yes. He's Oh, he's building a pine box. box. But, yes. I, I, I want to add just one real quick thing about John Nord. Mm -hmm. And John had mentioned uh, Len Denton, the grappler. John promoted a show in, in Maple Grove, Minnesota, several years ago. And I think Kurt Hennig was supposed to come in for the show, uh, did not make it. And John brought in the grappler who wrestled Jake Roberts on the show. And, you know, that that's an aside. But John promoted the show, and I remember this was the first and really the only time, sadly, uh, worked uh, for John. But wrestling promoters, every once in a while, they have a tendency, you know, ah, the, the, the gate wasn't so hot tonight. You know, we, I know we promised you this or this, but we're going to give yeah. you this. Uh, John Nord was and is a straight shooter. And he, he paid everything he said he was going to pay. Uh, he has always been tremendously respectful. And what I love about John is he doesn't bullshit. John knows that, it, you know, he's acknowledged his demons. Yeah. Um, he tells it like it is. He is what you see is what you get. It's and, gen uh, and genuine. Absolutely. And, that, and that's, it's, it's hard to find. Yeah, because you, you have people that... You know, they'll either, they'll kind of sugarcoat or kayfabe, you know, yeah. everything that had happened. It's like, he's telling it and he's, you know, being forthright. And to me, the most you can do for someone is give them respect. Yeah. And, and that's one of the things, guys, that I feel like I have respect for John Nord and what he's done in the business, but hearing him as an individual I'm like, I don't know how you can't be attracted to a personality like that because it's just, it's so gravitating. Like there's an energy around him that I think for, for me, it was hard to describe. It's just, there's something about him that's magnetic as an individual. And it's, it's hard for me to put that hard for me to kind of put my finger on that. Chris, you and I talked to John in Waterloo 
And, and ladies and gentlemen, believe me, and Chris will back this up, uh, there are some stories that we're going to have John tell on the air uh, next time out. When he, we ha- The guy had us in stitches. He is absolutely hysterical. Mm-hmm. Uh, some of his more R-rated uh, <laughs> stories are, you know, um, John is John. And again, what I love about the guy is here I am, I'm John Nord. And, you know, mm-hmm. there might be a couple of pock marks, a couple of scars here and there but this is who I am. And yeah. uh, God bless him. L- love the guy. What a great guest. Those R-rated stories, that would be great on something like, I don't know, an AWA Unleashed After Dark episode or something. Oh, no kidding. You know, there there has been ideas thrown around about maybe uh, having it an interpersonal – maybe this is something we could do in person with fans that would maybe uh, – Maybe that's something we could all get together on and maybe we could have a couple of cocktails and tell some stories and maybe it's something we could uh, have some of our fans be a part of. I love that idea. Um, Why not? uh, There'd be a birthday candle involved in that birthday candle story and it being blown out. Just saying. Oh, yeah, I, I, I get that. And and believe it or not, ladies and gentlemen, we're mm. trying to convey, and this is going to be hard to believe, the world of wrestling and its characters sometimes are a little outlandish. I know that's hard to believe. What? Yeah, yeah. I, K-Fabe, I, I Nick, K-Fabe. Yeah, I, I don't, don't want to a bubble here, but, uh, but wrestlers are not your average, uh, you know, bear or whatever. Um, but they yeah, don't all look like an unmade bed. Unmade bed. Uh, you know, we'll, we'll certainly tell the Larry Hennig story, you know, when, when uh, you know, Bobby Heenan had a woman in an airplane spin and all that kind of stuff. And <laughs> Hennig happened to be there when it happened. And we'll, we'll tell a lot of stories. But, yeah, let's work on that uh, AWA Unleashed After Dark. I really like that idea. And I can think of some of our listeners and some of our viewers that I know would be front and center at an event like that. They would eat it up okay well let's uh yeah let, let's go ahead and uh brainstorm and maybe as the weather gets a little warmer and uh maybe travel conditions improve for people we'll uh we'll look to do that and maybe we could get uh mr nord to to uh tell some stories as well but that's kind of just all off the cuff all right let's uh let's give some shout outs here guys and then uh let's wrap it up bring it home as they say in the uh, business yeah I'll give it get to a long time friend uh, who I, I've always said that he and Nick Bockwinkle, if there was a conversation between the two of them, uh, you would not only know the uh, how, how to make a watch, but you would learn the history of time. Uh, my longtime dear friend, Jeff Eichstead, who also does an incredible Jesse the Body Ventura imitation. So, Ike, shout out to you, my friend. Sweet. Sweet. From all of us, Ike. And, and uh, my shout out is to Mike Frame in St. Paul, Minnesota. I've known Mike since the SNR days. Great wrestling fan. Loves our podcast. Used to be front and center at all the uh, Ropers and Fridley shows. Uh, you're not going to find a better friend or a more loyal listener than Mike Frame. So big Mike, shout out. And uh, mine's going to go out to Robert Abishola who uh, just uh, well, by the time he sees this, he probably would have been caught up. But he said that he just found out about our podcast uh, about a week ago, and he's been binge-watching everything. He loves it. Grew up in New England, uh, but didn't know a lot about the AWA. So he's learning all these stories. So, uh, Robert, thank you for checking in via the YouTube comments. And, guys, that's the best way to help us grow, right? I mean, all kidding aside, like subscribe to the YouTube channel because you're going to get – you know, you're going to get the stories. You're going to get the facial expressions. You're going to get the pictures. The audio is great. Like the regular podcast is great via, you know, uh, iTunes or Spotify or, you know, wherever you're going to get it. But YouTube really, as I feel where most of the people uh, really like to enjoy consuming the podcast. So, uh, I, yeah, that's pretty much the uh, the best thing that I can say when it comes to that. Just click just click the subscribe. It's not difficult, folks. And it, you, it, yeah. It helps us immensely. You know, Chris has said many, many times, it's so easy to do, and it is the way to get, you know, to get this podcast expanded. No question. 
And for the fans, you can always mute the audio when Mick's talking. 